All right, so I'm here today with Ms. Yunt from Barnado High School. She's serving this year as a national FFA teacher ambassador, and she has agreed to talk with us about how to help your students apply for an SAE grant. So obviously this year, one of our big strategic goals and for the next five years is to grow supervised ag experiences in the state. And what better way to do that than to put cash in the hands of your students up to $1,000 each to either start a new SAE or to expand an existing one. So I'm gonna turn this over to Ms. Yunt and she's gonna walk us through the process of applying for these grants. Okay, so I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, can you see what I see? Yes, ma'am, sure can. I see your power. Okay. So um, SAE grants are a great way to get funding into your students' hands. Um, FFA actually has quite a few different grants. Um, and if you've ever received one, it's really not that difficult um, and it can get money to your program. Um, I've linked a couple of different SAE resources to this PowerPoint, and I think Mr. Cade's going to share this with y'all. Um, there's step-by-step -step instructions that you can go through. Um, if you have a student that you can um, kind of trust to go off on their own, you can always give them this and they can kind of walk through it themselves. It goes step-by-step -step how to access everything. Um, and that's good for an advisor um, that needs a little help too. There's a sample application. Um, I kind of have a love hate with this because it's what it looks like after you submit it. This is the PDF version. Um, and some things aren't clear on this, like uh, character restrictions and stuff like that. So while this is a good resource um, to get started, uh, we'll actually look at the online um, application. And then there's a judging rubric. And when you write your SAE grants, I would actually go um, and have this like alongside so you can make sure you're hitting everything um, that FFA is looking for. Um, I'm not sure how they they actually who scores their like grants for growing or living to serve grants, um, but they actually have volunteers score these. So you want to make sure and they follow along the rubric. So you want to make sure you're hitting um all of these points and certain things way more than others and we'll kind of talk about that um and for all of these um box files you hit download uh it'll ask you to sign up or log in you never ever have to sign up or log in you just exit out um and you can save it to your computer i know that sometimes that freaks people out so the next the first big thing um and i don't know about y'all but a lot of times i know sometimes you know i slack a little bit all of my students don't have their login information um your students have to be able to log in um as advisors we cannot even access the sae grant application um i actually had to um to show you the sae grant i'm gonna have to log into one of my students accounts um so there's that uh but how you get there so the first thing you do is if you start from the national ffa website you can go to explore ffa and under awards and competitive events you're going to scroll down to grants and scholarships and you'll have a couple different options pop up um if you've never taken a look at ffa grants they are so easy to get and can do wonders for your program. So I would encourage you to take a look here or even scholarships for your seniors, um, but we're gonna go to the middle one. And so you can scroll down, there's different examples by pathways you can look at, um, and there's lots of great stuff down here. Um, everything I show you that is linked in this PowerPoint, you can find our, our SAE grant information. And I'll go ahead and click that and show you what it looks like. It's just a box um, with all these different PDF files um, of different things that can help you, like membership login help. Um, it's the sample SAE grant application, um, even grant descriptions, and even the flyer itself. So, um, but the biggest thing is your students have to have um, 
their grant, um, I'm sorry, their login for FFA. Um, and there's a sheet in here to help you get that information if, um, if, if you haven't set your students up. So what we're gonna do is, so when you click this button here, this SAE grant application, FFA houses an um, online application center. And so you would hit, it's gonna come up. Um, it'll probably ask you to log in. I've already logged in, um, but you're gonna hit view programs because this student has never applied for anything. Um, and you can see this is all the programs FFA has available right now. Actually, um, I don't know if the state was aware, but there's a four to $8,000 grant for a state day of service going on right now. Um, and then there's FFA mini grants. You can always apply for those. They run monthly if you have like a day of service you wanna do. Um, but we're gonna go to this SAE grant. And so it'll pop up, um, it'll explain like only students 7th through 12th grade are eligible, um, what they have to do uh, if they're selected, and you just go hit apply. And this is what it looks like at first. See, you have two parts, and um, in the PowerPoint, I kind of broke things down a little bit more because it can get kind of confusing. Um, but if you go to this first part, and I really think it's not going to let me see that second page. Um, I'm not going to enter her FFA ID and everything. I don't have it on me. Um, but you would select a grade, put your school address, um, school name, uh, FFA name, FFA chapter name, and FFA chapter ID. Um, the voluntary disclosure is an interesting part, um, and this is going to trip a lot of kids up. Um, so this is voluntary. It's completely optional. However, these SAE grants are based on uh, financial need. So I would try to encourage your students to fill this out um, just because it shows that they have a financial need. Under this financial analysis is where it gets a little tricky because usually um, students get a little tripped up when you say the word dependence, um, you know, um, or how much they make um, for their household income. Um, I've had a couple students want to maybe exaggerate and not in the right direction, if that makes sense. Um, they need to try to be as accurate as possible. Uh, but it is just an estimate. Um, so a lot of times though, that freaks my kids out. They're like, I gotta text my mom. Um, so definitely that might be a part they need help with. And then unusual circumstances, um, any medical expenses, anything happening in their family, you know, just if there's anything going on um, that would inhibit them from being able to start this SAE on their own, um, they can mention it there. And then I don't think it's going to let me get next. Maybe it did. I wonder if it'll let me just hit a random number just to be able to. Um, and Ms. Young, while you're doing that, I will say I also graded these last year. The mm -hmm. financial disclosure, it is important because I remember going through them, you've got a lot of good applications. It's supposed to be based on financial needs. So if you don't disclose that, it's difficult to determine whether or not you should qualify for one. Um, so I would also highly encourage your students to include it because I know when I graded it, it definitely helped me narrow down which students were gonna be selected for a grant based on that need. Exactly, yeah. It um A lot of it comes down to who's grading it, but when you give them that extra information, it kind of helps determine. Yep. And I really hope this is going to work so I can show you the second page. Um, okay, here we go. Um, SAE plan. So each SAE, you know, fits in a different AFNR pathway. Um, and so you would have to select that pathway. Why is that important? 
Um, that's important because, let me see, there's these grant descriptions. And one thing um, you'll notice here is there's different numbers of grants um, by not only sometimes they narrow it down by certain states, um, but each company basically sponsored a certain number of grants. And so, you know, there may be a certain number of grants for that specific pathway. Um, so like for the environmental um, and natural resource systems pathway, there's six grants available um, for that pathway. However, there's 140 grants available for any pathway. So they, they get to um, apply basically in both areas, um, but there's some specific for that category. Darn, where I was at. Um, and you can put, put an alternate um, I know sometimes we have those SEs that kind of fall like on the border between two. Um, and you would select whether they start a new SAE or expand an SAE. Um, goals are really important and something you probably need to spot check. Um, it's extremely important that they use SMART goal format. Um, you can see here that that's a large part um, of the points on the SAE plan for the goals um, is whether they use SMART goals. Um, can, you can see, I think it's right here. Um, if they don't use a SMART format, they automatically only get up to four points. Um, so that's a huge hit if they don't use SMART goal format. So it's definitely something I would spot check because I feel like a lot of students, until they get used to that format, they struggle with it. Um, and after asking my kids, I had a couple complete this and their biggest problem they had was with this timeline. Um, so the timeline is just a either a monthly or a bi-monthly timeline. Um, so these get announced in late December. And so they want to know by February, what are the students doing all the way through next November? Um, what are they doing with their SAE? Um, what are they going to do? Um, you know, how are they going to plan their SAE, their implementation, the evaluation? And so I just told my students like to kind of type out like each month and tell me what you're going to do. OK, if you're going to do a workshop in May, well, are you planning in April? I, you know, I would hope so. And then are you going to reflect? And that may be the same thing, um, like if you had a student growing crops, you know, um, you're going to plan what you're going to plant. Um, you're going to actually, you know, do the, um, you're going to plant the crops. And then are you going to reflect on your practices at the end or reflect on your sales? Um, and you just kind of give an idea of that. You don't have to be super specific, um, but you want to put in as much detail as you can. The problem with a lot of these though, and with some of our students that are long-winded, because um, I know some of y'all probably have a couple, I know I do. Um, each of these boxes have a character limit. Um, for the goals, it's not usually a problem, um, but then, the SAE plan, it usually is um, in this timeline. You only get 800 characters, um, which, you know, they, they have to be short and concise. Um, they, they can't be long winded. And then with this, um, if you ever need to save, these won't auto save. You need to hit save and continue. Um, and when you're finished, you would hit mark as complete. Um, and when it's complete, this box over here should be totally green. Um, and then you would move on to SAE budget. Now, SAE budget is probably the funnest part, um, but a lot of students kind of overthink it and you might have to help them separate the need from the want. Um, you know, we all can get a little crazy sometimes with shopping. Um, so, but basically this is where they get to dream. Um, if you could buy anything for your SAE, what would you buy? Um, 
So they can exceed a thousand dollars, but of course the grant is only a thousand dollars. So you do have to put in an expense type, whether it's a capital expense or an operating expense, um, and select the item type. So maybe they're buying machinery, um, or is it an operating expense, um, like fuel? And then their description of what they're going to use it for, and then their total cost. Um, let me see. Give you an example. Um, so maybe they're buying supplies. Um, that's an easy one. I would not be super specific. Um, I've had I had one of my students calculate things down to the penny. Um, and she actually kind of the program or whatever was freaking out and she was getting an error message down here at the bottom. Um, usually when you try to use like round whole numbers um, and you can give yourself a little wee leeway, like if something costs, you know, $24 and 67 cents, you it's okay if you put $30. Um, one thing I learned starting off with the SAE grants, uh, or not SAE grants, but the grants in general, especially the FFA grants, because um, I've been awarded a couple of those um, in the past year, is the first one I did, I was super specific. And by the time the money gets awarded, your what you need sometimes changes. So you don't want to limit yourself. Um, you need to be specific enough that, you know, that they know the money is going to be spent on something needed for the SAE. Um, but you don't have to get down to the penny. Like, you don't have to look up something on Amazon and, and you know, get that specific. So you definitely don't want to limit yourself. Um, if you need more lines, you can always click yes and add more. Um, if you don't, that's okay, too. It'll calculate the total cost of everything at the bottom, and you would just hit next. And you can see it's not going to, um, it is not going to let you mess up anything because it's very specific. It'll catch errors you didn't even know you had. Um, and then this last page is where you're going to put if you have any collaborators, if you have anybody helping you obtain resources past the $1,000. Um, I know some of our students have awesome, gigantic projects. Um, but sometimes they're getting resources from other places. So this is where you would indicate that. Um, Did you have any assistance with capital items? Then your students write a statement. Basically, why do they really need this grant to start or expand their SAE? Um, explain any circumstances that that's causing that um, need to, to be present or what's going to happen. Are they going to be able to do an SAE without this grant? And then the fun part, the students get to try to sign this um, this online application and they would mark that as complete. And the next step that I'm not going to get to show you because all of this isn't complete um, is this last part. Here we go. So as an advisor, um, you have to do an advisor statement. So when your students get completely finished, um, they have to enter your um, email and their parents' email. So they do need their parents' email. The parent has to approve of the SAE, and then the advisor has to write an advisor statement. Um, the advisor statement does count for a certain portion of points, so you want to make sure you, you take time to do that or you can um, negatively affect, you know, your student's application. So I think that's, so one thing um, that you need to keep in mind is 
if a grant recipient it gets the award to receive the money, they have to sign their grant contract. Um, they have to do a cash claim form, which they have to give their social security number. Um, the advisor has to sign off and the parent has to sign off and then they would be required to do a mid-year report on June 30th. Basically summing up what they've done with their SAE, um, have they met their goals, that sort of thing. And a couple of things to keep in mind is applications are due November 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Keep in mind that's only 7 p.m. our time. Don't let the time change, um, you know, cause confusions that are going to keep you from submitting something that you worked really hard on. And then don't have students start like the day before it's due because you also have to have time to come back and write that advisor statement and gain the parent approval, which is you know, for some parents, that means having the students sit down with the parent um, to click the correct buttons. So, and then students have to log back in to submit. So you don't want to wait till the last minute or, you know, it's going to be you sweating and trying to get everything together and, you know, a kid sweating and you, you don't want to wait till the last minute. So from what I gather, Ms. Young, they're going to be awarding 371 of these grants this year. And to my recollection, no That's one from Louisiana, right no one from Louisiana got any last year. So this is literally free money that's being left on the table that our students are not accessing. So again, I've seen projects that our students are doing. If you want money for mm -hmm. your kids, either to start a new SAE or to expand a current one, this is an outstanding opportunity to do that. Because again, some of these grants are specific to the category that they're in. Some are specific to animals, some are specific to plants, you know, and, and every other type of SAE that you could imagine. So um, let's try to work hard and make sure that our Louisiana kids are getting access to these resources to grow their programs. Um, again, it is due by November 15th. So if you wanna do them for this year, you've got a little less than two weeks to get them done. Um, and if anyone has questions, I'm sure you can reach out to Ms. Young. Her information is in the teacher directory or email us here at the FFA office. We'd be glad to help you. Uh, but good luck. And remember, this is every year. So if you missed the deadline this year, next year, it'll be due again November 15th. So let's make sure we spread the word with our students. Uh, Ms. Young, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no, but if you do need help, reach out to me. I'd love to help you. Um, it's easy money. I, I've never tried the SAE grants. This is our first year doing that. Um, but I've received a few of the, um, the other, and it's so easy. Um, it's basically free money, you know, to, to do stuff with your kids. So I would try it. Yep, that's what it's designed for. All right, Michelle. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time and for being with us here today. Thank you.